Play forward for Cowboys, but in the end, they are now on their defensive side. There's Joro from the right wing playing one on net. Gashwind is up high. Second touch from Joro needed. It's there. What a touch from Joro. Somehow, a golden boot finds the top 90, one to nil. And the give and go is strong with these two. Gashwin finds that he doesn't really have a good angle on this one. Really, really hope to see Memory just continue what he's what he's done the past the past one game at least. Oh my god. Memory, what a okay, pass. Astro finds Memory, who finds Zolhe. They are not teammates in the rival series, but they might as well be. That's as pretty as any three-man play we've seen since September. Ins left. Ralph now for Plasma. Team play working their way downfield. AXB shot is gonna tie it with one second to go. The passing plays from the dudes have been incredible tonight and Ralph knows that he doesn't have time to get this thing, but it goes straight towards the defender and Nitro is gonna be following this one up, going for a ceiling shot, getting it right past and finishing that one off to give them the 6-1 scoreline at this moment. Yep, Nitro saying, oh, Fresno, you took that one-on-one -on -one perfectly fine. I'm going to show you how to 1v2. Super position is just taking that away with no recourse. This is going to go toward J-Bot. Rains down a goal from the heavens. It's 6-1. Yep, Swack really uh, doing a good job wow. of beating Tiny Tim there. It's just that, you know, he didn't account. First killer looking to untie the game, and he has... What a top class shot from first killer. So nice. Uh, a little, a little, a little rotating. Yes. Taking it slowly, perhaps a little too slowly with only a minute left on the clock, but Hex keeps possession. Finally cleared away by T. Perel. Ajax going up in the air for the third time this game is finding success again. Ajax doing very well from this position. Ajax now getting a hat trick for his team as he goes up into the air, gets it right over top of Q, gets it bar down and Andrew so far. It almost worked out in their favor, but Upper 90 Esports were able to get back in time. And first killer just balancing the ball like a ballerina right into the net and gets the goal with zero, second, or zero minutes, 57 seconds on the clock. That was a beautiful shot by first killer. A ballerina in the air. And potentially final game of this series up into the corner running an empty trying to make something happen what a drop from skies did he do that himself skies doing this all on his own there recovering to the wall getting that oh, one. oh what is and that and a savage these rotations with these clears off the wall and setting up candy for <laughs> oh my gosh candy with the complete mind game just patiently waiting for his enemy to just fly right past the ball First killer setting him up for that one, just scoring that one, making it now. As it goes straight towards him from that crazy explosive demolition. I just want to call it back the ceiling shot opportunity by Ajax. Oh, T. Carell putting it away on his own here, but I do want to call back the ceiling shot that Ajax put on target and was redirected by T. Carell for a very close shot opportunity. Um, we're seeing some great stuff out of this mechanical gaming team. Hit that right towards him and Candy finishing it off making it so that they are now up by two goals. And with a minute remaining, we haven't seen too many reverse sweeps in the fashion of the series so far. And Candy, my gosh, I was trying to say something, Candy. You're just making me speechless at this point as he just hits it off the wall from that abysmal clear by T. Corral and just finishes it off. And Candy's been showing up in force, just playing spectacularly out of his mind. And the this... opens up for him. He knows when to commit to the offense and he knows when he needs to get back. And this is what's allowing their their defense to remain strong, even <laughs> though, oh my goodness, even though Killer Eakin's playing a constant 2v1 situation. Um, their whole gameplay just meshes up together. Everything affects everything else and they know it. And that's decided to go there to get boost. So it's, you know, I don't know, man. Maybe he could have lived off the small pads. Regardless, they get the answer back, goal to make up for it, so we don't even have to talk about it anymore. <laughs> uh, Bell doing everything right here, getting Ooh, that was nice. into position. I feel like a game and a half is enough time to learn that the first killer is pretty scary. 
Forky coming in, and he drops this right down. And now here goes Pirates. High risk play through the air. He's picked out a oh! spot, and he dunks it through legit Cyborg. The style points coming in from Pirates right now. A little bit of 360 action, and he's just able to drag this one past legit Cyborg off the nose even. <laughs> Taroko goes right over Darky, and that's a good ball out to the corner. Taroko really slowing down the ball in the last minute of play. Oh, with a great shot. Double touch, gets it, passes it off the wall to himself. Darky's sitting looking kind of helpless there. I'm not sure there's much more he could have done, but what a great effort by Taroko. While Nora Illusion playing with not Ty or Seabass. So this is a really interesting amalgamation and it's working. Oh. What? What? <laughs> what? Okay, so Astro getting a pinch off one of the attackers from high and first killer able to get that beautiful redirect to finish that one off. And as you were saying, good, and I'm getting strong flashes of like KDOP and Fairy Peak back when they were uh, the two kill two's killers. What a shot here. The Wild Scion along the side plays this perfectly. Oh my that gosh. Added power on that as it's coming off the wall. And not only that, doesn't work out. Atomic over to Corrupt. Oh, this is a fantastic team play. They clear the zone, then they set this up. That is a Cloud9 level passing play from Cypher. This is absolutely beautiful. King Wizard with a perfect touch there. And despite Skaxi and Jet Remind you that's keeping the pressure on. Upper 90 making it so that they have time to rotate back so they don't get scored on quite so easily in this second game. Candy able to set up an opportunity for his team actually just scoring it by himself. And this is really the first time we've seen a solo play from Candy resulting in a goal. Candy doing everything right here, pushing it out in front, saving enough boost for that second touch, getting it by both players on the game. Trying to game. spring the upset over our number one seed. Hasn't been anybody higher than a two winning the tournament in quite some time. Here's Corel through the air and he goes over first killer. Everything's working for Corel. Well done by T. Corel. Perfect carry all the way over first killer. First killer perhaps underestimating his opponent. With absolutely, I think a great way to summarize this series thus far is that after game one, T. Corel really figured Forky out. I think his repertoire of shots, he's been prepared for 90% of the time. His defensive sort of mindset, really not enough to stop all these shots. This barrage from T. Carell has been very successful. Nitro making his way right down the middle, but that's going to be taken by memory. And Astro is in what we call badgy position in Rocket League Central, just hanging around on the back wall on the other side of the field. And it sets this up for memory. That is a nasty, nasty pass. I mean, he comes like off the wall, but the critical ones that allow their opponents to score goals. Timothy on the rotation, actually Nitro clearing that one towards Fresno, who has a great redirect opportunity and a goal to get themselves the three goal advantage. Fresno finally getting paid for all that hard work he's been doing on setups the last few times. Meets this one in the midfield and just went off the backboard to his teammate Desfi, who can't quite finish it. and. Once again, the pressure, as soon as it amounts, it's stifled almost instantly. Oh! A nice one-two play in the middle of the air, like a, 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 a elongated a pinch there, two to nil for Havoc. I remember being so excited, like RLCS season one, when we first saw like the calculated boy. Timothy misses the ball, Illusion able to hit that one towards the center of midfield. Astro following that up and first killer is gonna be there with the second touch to get the goal. And he's been popping off so far in this first game. Yep, and failure to clear off the backboard once again, killing anybody. We don't even see anyone go up until this ball has already bounced on the backboard. Just for whatever reason, wasn't lining up for it. Now Corel through the airboard. We've seen this from him a few times. Oh, look at that. He gets the ground pinch to force that through with a little extra power. There's no way First Killer was anticipating this. You could see he didn't use any boost in his trip back to the goal, thinking it was going to be a soft Not even loop. a minute gone in this game so far, as it's been back and forth between both squads. Fresno missing the ball, allowing Astro to get possession, going for a beautiful flick. Illusion <gasps> falling that out. Astro finishing it off and getting that brilliant passing play. Oh my 
this set up from Astro to get the flick over Timothy and then up to Illusion, back down to Astro. Just the nuttiest give and go that I've seen in a long this time. Very tight window at the corner of the goal. He Great nailed pass, it. Better shot, and Vince will make the save here. But can he make it? What? Oh, it goes off the first killer <laughs> and in. Oh what was God. that? Sometimes it is just your night. <laughs> Rather than T. Corral, who I think stole the boost a lot more times than he needed to in several of his games, Taroko is very strategically stealing a lot of boost. And here he comes up with another goal. I mean, you could play the 100 boost drinking game, take a shot every time Darky gets a full boost, and you'd probably still be stone cold sober by the end of this game. But it's really been the defensive team, Verados, that's been the shining uh, shining emblem here of their oh. team. Fair Bluton with a great play on net. Pirates having to make a touch here, and just, I don't, I don't know, Vaughn. The, the, they're, they're just being taken to throw this kick off deep into the dude's zone. Let's see what Ralph can do. It's a 2-1 lead. He got the dunk. He got the equalizer. Just like that with a minute 49 to go. This is incredible from Ralph. All on his own. From one boost pad all the way to the goal. He gets that one up and Seabass is just left wondering. Apparently, but now first killer. Oh, he's not to be outdone. Last goal wins, and it's first killer, 10-7, as he moves on into the grand finals. Anything you can do, first killer can do better, I, I think is the message here. Perfectly placed. Uh, somebody waiting on the ground for it, and Memory just has to touch it in. Oh, and he, Memory. Oh my god, this is like a vicious, vicious aerial fake by Memory here. This is, so, he literally just, oh. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, second touch, not quite on the mark. That would have been a high degree of difficulty to <laughs> say the least. And Taroko, boy, this had about 100K coming in. It's 108. Look at this as he pinches it on the ground. Oh, man, that one's got to be a pinch at the pain level of a bee sting, let me tell you. Out of it, they just have to put together some shots of their own. You don't put any shots on net in the first minute, you're going to have a really hard time. AXB to Plasma, and they are back in the leads, and the dudes just are menacing the Nexus signups in the last couple weeks. As we see, Riddle's actually taking a slower kickoff here, and it looks like he's going to go for the ceiling shot. He gets the tap, and that ball's going in. Riddle's from up high, coming down like Batman. Look at this. Right off, he hits it right off the wall, follows it off the ceiling, and then gets the one last flick and puts that one bottom Having a little corner. bit of issue taking that ball and putting it in the back of the net. And Illusion looking to air drag this one right in. Deflect that back in. First killer it kind of scouted it out though. And now he's just gonna take this from the ground up and over. And now first killer's rolling. He scored four unanswered, including a beauty here. I'm soon. Yep, there, and that well-rounded game has been set up by a combination of both direct passing like that one, AXB to Plasma. A ton of space. And now Riddles, boy, he's set up in the offensive zone, and he's dug in pretty deep, but not anymore. First kill is going to get onto this, and he got the demo <laughs> as well as clinical a blow-and-go as you'll ever see. Riddles is expecting to be able to get a little save off the slow bounce here. The best. Jesse does so well and finds his first. Definitely nice to find it. That minute 30 second mark. He, he does it, it again. again. No, you're not allowed to do that, Jesse. Goaltender interference does not exist in Rocket League. Perfectly legal and perfectly executed I'm twice so angry. in a Team row. Thinking here, they're going to be able to regain some momentum. Finally, coming up on halftime, it's AJ, though. One-on-one -on -one with Pishies, oh and he faked him out! Lord. Oh, my goodness! The dribble plays end up working for Team Thinking this time. It didn't work the first time, but the fake on the dribble 
is enough to get that far in the first minute, but a good shot from Legit Cyborg on target is going to be knocked away by Taroko as it's still back and forth between these two teams. An opportunity though for first killer to hit it off the backboard, and he does just that to get the goal over top of Superposition. So let, let's just review what happened here. 70 seconds of possession for Superposition and shots and time and do the other stuff. And, you know, when you take away first killer's ability to dribble the ball on the floor, they go, oh, we'll just do direct passing, or we'll play keep away, or get crazy redirects <laughs> like this. If you want to beat this We Are Insane team, you kind of just have to play perfectly. Like, that's about all there is to it. Play fast, play perfect, and you can beat them, maybe. That corner angle, and I think if you're super positioned, Overtime sounds really good. Maybe not though. Jbot, oh. no. Vaynok, yes. And we'll go to game five. No need for overtime here. Superposition more than happy to take the win. Jbot putting it off of the backboard correctly, I think, because I don't think he has a shot there. And Vaynok just ready to clean it up. Gets enough height on the ball so he doesn't hit the ground. And...